Welcome to Nursat Satellite Channel and Telenumir TV. We begin with the following headlines. Pope Francis calls for a new covenant between youth and the elderly. Middle East Council of Churches condemns religious mockery at the Olympics opening ceremony. Jordan welcomes the listing of Jerusalem's old city as a World Heritage Site. Conference towards Econolical Legal Culture concludes its work at the Dead Sea. Welcome back. On the occasion of the International Day for Grandparents and the Elderly, which Pope Francis has themed, Do Not Abandon Me in Old Age, His Holiness spoke about integrational dialogue, which he considers essential for learning the beauty of life and achieving a fraternal society. In a tweet, he emphasized the need for a new covenant between the young and the elderly, shedding light on the isolation that many elderly people experience, often falling victim to a culture of exclusion. He called for strengthening the commitment of each church community to build bridges between generations and to combat loneliness, affirming that God never abandons his children. He added that we should reflect on the value and dignity of human life, especially in its final stages. The Holy Father concluded his tweet by stating that a long life is a blessing from God and that old age should be viewed as a gift deserving of gratitude and appreciation. The Middle East Council of Churches issued a strong and clear message to the Olympic organizers in France, firmly rejecting the broadcast of offensive scenes related to the most important and sacred aspects of Christianity. In a statement, the Council said, We witnessed during the opening ceremony the mockery and derision of what is sacred to billions of people worldwide in ways that have no connection to human dignity. This statement emphasized that Christianity has always been at the forefront of protecting freedoms, preserving diversity, and upholding human dignity and rights, and therefore it cannot accept being demeaned by certain groups. The Middle East Council of Churches reiterated that freedom is a major responsibility in human history, and those who exercise it must feel the responsibility to respect others and their beliefs. This statement highlighted that the incident is concerning for the future of humanity, potentially leading it to an age of darkness, degeneration, and primitiveness. On another note, the Council of Catholic Churches in the Holy Land sent a message of condolences to the families of the victims of Majd al-Shams bombing incident. The telegram stated, The killing of 12 children and the loss of innocent lives in the attack on a football field in Majd al-Shams is an act condemned by anyone who respects the sanctity of life. Therefore, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the families and relatives of the victims and to all members of the Druze family community in the Holy Land. The loss of these children is a tragedy that leaves a deep impact on all of us. The bishops also called on all warring parties to commit to peace, rejecting all forms of violence and strive for mutual understanding and respect. On a different note, Jordan has warned of the serious escalation in southern Lebanon and the potential consequences of igniting a new war against the country in light of the dangerous developments, including the recent missile attack on the occupied Syrian town of Majd al-Shams. The Jordanian Foreign Ministry emphasized that the escalation in southern Lebanon could lead to the expansion of the conflict into a comprehensive regional war. It underscored the importance of supporting Lebanon, ensuring its security and stability, and safeguarding its people and institutions. Under the patronage of his Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, the 11th Annual Canon Law Conference for Lawyers was concluded at the Dead Sea. The conference was organized by the Latin Ecclesiastical Courts in Jerusalem, Amman and Nazareth under the theme Towards a Canonical Legal Culture, Marriage, Its Regulations and Canonical Procedures. The opening session of the conference featured the Dean of the Vatican Supreme Court of Appeal, the Archbishop and President of the Jordanian Judicial Council, the Vatican Ambassador to Jordan. The event was attended by a large number of bishops, judges, priests, Dr. Ramzi Khouri, Chairman of the Palestinian Presidential Committee of Church Affairs, Palestinian Ambassador to the Vatican, Isa Qassasiyeh, and Mother Sophie Hattar, the General Superior of the Sisters of the Rosary. The conference also saw the participation of around 100 lawyers, judges, and legal experts from Jordan, Palestine, Galilee, Lebanon, Egypt, and Iraq, as well as legal experts from the Vatican. Earlier, a training course for Catholic ecclesiastical court judges from the Arab countries was also concluded at the Dead Sea. The Jordanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs welcomed UNESCO's decision to keep the Old City of Jerusalem and its walls on the World Heritage List. 
In its statement, the ministry noted that all current occupation measures aim to destroy the cultural heritage of the city and alter the character of the holy city. It warned that any changes to its legal status are considered null and void. The ministry also emphasized the need for Israel to halt all its violations in East Jerusalem, including excavation, tunneling, and other illegal activities. The Jordanian Foreign Ministry explained that the adoption of the decision by UNESCO was the result of Jordanian diplomatic efforts in coordination with the State of Palestine and the Arab and Islamic groups within the United Nations to protect the Islamic and Christian holy sites in the Holy Land. The UNESCO World Heritage Committee has added the archaeological site of Umjmal to the World Heritage List, joining six other Jordanian sites already on the list. Petra, Qasr Amra, Umm Rasas, Wadi Ram, the baptism site, and Salt. Minister of Tourism and Antiquities Makram al-Qaisi stated that the inclusion of Umm Jmal on the World Heritage List marks the beginning of Jordan's ongoing efforts to list many of its sites that possess exceptional global values and constitutes a distinguished human heritage. In related news, the Monastery of St. Hilarion in the Gaza Strip has been added to the list of World Heritage Sites in danger due to the current conditions. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, stated on its website that the ruins of Monastery of St. Hilarion, located on the hills of Nsirat coast in Gaza, are among the oldest monastic sites in the Middle East, dating back to the 4th century AD. The Jerish Festival concluded its events, which began on July 24th, under the theme, and the promise continues. Prime Minister Dr. Bishop Al-Khazawne lit the festival's flame in the presence of numerous Jordanian officials and participants from 40 Arab foreign countries. The festival's chairwoman, Minister of Culture Haifa Najjar, stated that this year's theme reflects a commitment to honoring the trust of safeguarding the Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem. She emphasized that the promise continues, extending the thread of light from Amman to Jerusalem and Gaza signaling the continuity of life and hope for a better future. Najjar also affirmed that art carries a message of beauty and goodness and has always been a part of national pride and a cornerstone of civilization for every nation. The Jarish festival featured 25 performing groups representing the folklore and heritage of their countries with a diverse range of activities including theater, poetry and visual arts. The Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem announced the arrival of a new shipment of humanitarian aid to the residents of northern Gaza, marking the second shipment since May. This aid is part of a humanitarian mission between the Patriarchate and the Knights of Malta, and includes food supplies for adults as well as provisions specially for children and individuals suffering from malnutrition, in addition to other essential supplies. The Patriarchate stated that the Knights of Malta delivered 40 tons of food supplies to be distributed to families residing in northern Gaza. The statement also noted that after the successful completion of the second humanitarian aid distribution, planning is underway to explore ways to provide medical care in the same region. Under the theme, My Mother is School of Life and Love, St. John the Baptist Church in Qaraqush, Iraq, hosted the closing day of the Mary Mother of Soros Sisters Festival for the Syriac Catholics. The festival organizers praised the role of mothers and their sacrifices for the happiness of their families, emphasizing the importance of living in security, peace, and lasting joy. They encouraged mothers to emulate the patience and sacrifice of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and urged the attending sisters to be true and faithful mothers, maintaining their families and praying for their sanctity. The Mary Mother of Soros Sisters Festival is considered the largest gathering of Christian women in the Middle East, comprising approximately 2,000 Iraqi women who meet weekly for lectures in various educational and recreational activities. And with that, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis calls for a new covenant between youth and the elderly. Middle East Council of Churches condemns religious mockery at the Olympics opening ceremony. Jordan welcomes the listing of Jerusalem's old city as a World Heritage Site. Conference towards Economical Legal Culture concludes its work at the Dead Sea. For more information, please visit our website, nursatjo.org. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day and hope to see you again.